Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the stream. Today, if I got this set up, we're going to be doing something a little bit different than what we normally do. Yesterday was a little bit different as well. I guess I guess I should, I guess, I guess I should say Happy New Year as well. Welcome, everybody, into 2019. Starting 2019, not with some ZBrush. Well, I guess, I guess a little bit with some ZBrush, but also a little bit with uh, some Blender junk. So, uh, somebody was asking about hard surface modeling yesterday on stream. Actually, I need to make sure that my face isn't covering up too much in my Blender scene here. I actually haven't checked on that. But um, yeah, so somebody was asking about some hard surface stuff yesterday. And I had my Android 17 character that we've been working on. Uh, you guys can check the, some of the links down below for my social if you guys haven't seen that guy. But uh, yeah, he doesn't have a ton of hard surface stuff on him. So I thought what would be fun is if we did some hard surface modeling here in ZBrush. And then after that, we can pop on over into Blender and try to play around with some physics with those hard surface models that we create. So I thought it would be cool if we made like some kind of marble maze or something like that. And then uh, after we get that uh, done in ZBrush, we can pop it over into here. And let's see, head on over to our physics tab. I actually need to, I don't know, that is set up as a rigid body. I need to delete that. But what we'll do is we'll add in our track that we create, and then we'll get some spheres populated in here, wherever these are, and do some rigid body physics. Right. Cha. And then we'll do some tests and try to get the marbles rolling around and maybe even try to do like a marble race or something like that. I thought that'd be pretty fun. And plus we get to uh, play around with doing some hard surface modeling here in ZBrush, which uh, is always something that I love to do. So, to get started, I think I'm probably just gonna like poly model all this stuff in here. Now, I could poly model this in Blender, but truthfully, I don't use Blender very often. I don't know a ton about Blender. Uh, I pretty much used this for the first time last week. So, <laughs> I'm gonna be doing some poly modeling here in ZBrush. So, let's go ahead and get started by getting a Let's see, let's just grab a Q cube, a cute cube, as I like to say. And I think the way that, I need to, I need to think about how I'm gonna do this track for a minute. Let's just like start pushing and pulling some stuff around and figure out like the best way that we wanna do this. So let's like create maybe one track piece and then we can duplicate that track piece multiple times or or maybe reuse that. So for hard surface modeling here in ZBrush, we're gonna be using the Z Modeler brush for pretty much everything. There will be some instances where we can do some cheating with some like slice curve brushes for edge loops and stuff like that. But for the most part, we're gonna be using this Z Modeler brush. If you hit the B key, Z, you'll find it right here. Z Modeler, BZM is the hot key for that by default. Then with the Z Modeler brush active, we're gonna hover over a face hold the space bar, and I'm just gonna go into insert poly loop, poly loop, and drop a couple poly loops in here. And because I have symmetry on, it's gonna make this uh, a lot easier to get some of this stuff done. So next, we're gonna hover over our uh, face over here, hold the space bar, and select extrude a single polygon. And we're just gonna extrude this up, except ZBrush just crashed randomly for no reason. I have no idea why that just happened. So we're gonna retry, but we got a couple more people in here now, so welcome guys, happy new year. Today we're gonna be playing around with doing some hard surface modeling and some physics sims, uh, if we can uh, ever get ZBrush to work and build our track. So let's get back to where we were very quickly there. And there's our Android 17 guy for some a couple thumbnails. I'm not gonna open him up right now, because he's a little a little heavy, and we just want to get this out as quick as we can. Let's see, we wanna initialize back to our little cube, and let me set this up real quick. Now, I'm guessing that the reason that we experienced a crash there is probably due to the fact that we're using symmetry with the Z Modeler brush, 
and ZBrush isn't a huge fan of that. So I'm actually, I'm really quick gonna cheat here with uh, my slice curve brush, which if you hold the control and shift keys and tap up here, you can select the slice curve brush from that menu and then draw out a slice. And then I'm gonna run a mirror and weld function, which you can find under tool, geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld. And then from there, we're gonna hold that spacebar again. We're gonna extrude. I'm gonna hit the X key to turn off my symmetry though and just extrude this polygonal face up. And now I could mirror that over to the other side or I can just tap on that face once and it will duplicate the last action that I did at that scale. What is going on, Beckert? Beckert and uh, who, who we got? Name's so dark I can't see it. Hud boy, what is going on guys? Happy New Year and welcome. That that was all you, the crash. You caused that one. <laughs> nah, it's it's just it happens from time to time. It's not a big deal. All right. So for those that are new here that are just jumping in, normally you know I do a bunch of digital sculpting. Today we're gonna do some hard surface modeling since uh, somebody was asking about that yesterday. And then after we're done with our hard surface model, we're gonna import it into Blender and try to do like a marble race or something like that. So I'm in the process, why can I not alt tab, uh, of uh, building a track for some, some marble races. So I'm gonna one up on all those marble streamers, right? I'm gonna build my track and then we're gonna make our own marble race. <laughs> so we got one track piece. So this is like a pretty basic piece of geometry, right? So now we could take this and position this in Blender and just like do a quick test if we want to see if this works. So to do that, I'll, I'll actually, before I do that, I'm going to mask off this top edge and then I'm going to bring our barriers down quite a bit because we want it to be pretty easy to see in the track, see how our marbles are doing. Plus, you know, there might be, a, depending on how fast these things are rolling, there might be a small chance that one will pop out and that could be interesting as well. So I'm gonna take this geometry and just press Control W to polygroup everything. And then I'm gonna export this. And where do I wanna put this? Let's see, I got like a physics folder here. Let's just make a new folder for our marble race pieces. And I'll just call this like track one. So this is like as simple as, as we can get, right? So now we can hop on over into Blender. Let's see, let's do a file, import wavefront OBJ, marble race track one. All right, so I got that track one piece of geometry here. Zoom in, it is upside down because everything that you import with ZBrush comes in upside down. I don't know how to do stuff too quick in here because I don't know very, uh, a ton of hotkeys. So if anybody wants to help me out with any of that stuff, just, just shout it out in the chat and I will do my best to remember what I can. I'm trying to find my object modifier. There we go. I wanted to, let's see, where are you? Which rotation axis are you? You're not changing. Why aren't you changing? Well, that's no fun. Well, that's okay. We don't need it to be perfectly straight. We actually do want some slope to this. I'm not sure why my uh, object, oh, there we go. I just had to click off of it and click it again to get it to update. I'm not sure why that is, but either way, we got it figured out. So let's scale this puppy up. Or you know, actually, I, I think I'll keep this small and then, uh, so all the other track pieces we import are to scale to what we have here in ZBrush. And then I'll just move our little marble boy down here and we're just gonna do a quick test to see if we can get this working. Whoa. We can also mess with our scale over here. But that looks like about the size that we want, something like that, sure. Let's just position our marble and try to see if we can get some physics working. 
So we're gonna come on down here and let's see, let's do some rigid body physics on our little marble boy and we'll make him, I don't know, let's just try a couple things real quick. We'll do like a five kilogram piece here and for the ball, let me see. I believe that is all fine. I don't think we need to mess with that too much right now. Let's just get some physics on this stuff. And I think, I'm not positive, but I might need to center the uh, geometry on this, or uh, the, the center point. That might only be if it's affected by gravity, which is, I believe, what that dynamic check will do. Let's just see if this works really quick. Hey, oh, 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 he's, he's slowing down. It did roll, but not very well. <laughs> And I think I know why. Oh, I thought maybe it was gonna be a friction thing. I think we want to, instead of a convex hull, I think I might wanna set, set this to a mesh collider so that it's more accurate to the geometry that's going on here. If, I'm, if I remember correctly, I think the rigid hull is uh, something to do with, um, it's just like a box collider surrounding your object. So it's not quite as accurate to the shape. There we go. So that's sliding a lot more freely. So now what we can do is set up multiple track pieces, even get some more marbles in here, and even maybe start making some more complicated stuff. I was thinking it'd be cool to like make a ramp or try to hard surface model like a, a funnel of some kind. I thought that would be pretty cool. So let's try that next. Let's try, let's try a ramp or funnel. What do you guys think? Ramp or funnel? Let's call this track one. I'm just gonna duplicate this track piece. And I think, um, I think I can maybe just reuse this if we want to make a ramp next. Or we can funnel it up. Let's see. I'm just gonna let that get in the way for a minute. So I'm using the transpose tool to move and rotate here. If I do anything too quick, just let me know and I'll explain what I am doing specifically. All right, I saw funnel first, so we will do funnel first. I'll just reposition this real quick. Both, we are gonna do both, absolutely. A tree, a tree. We could, we could make a tree. <laughs> we could make a tree for our marble race. That would be a great track piece. <laughs> What's going on, Ghost of Christmas Future? All right, so real quick, I'm just gonna scale this down a little bit, just kinda stretch it, and I'll make a ramp in a bit. All right, so let's uh, duplicate this, and then go down to Initialize, and make a 212 cylinder, so XYZ212, Y cylinder. And I'm just gonna move him over here. Doesn't really matter where it is. Where did my pin go? There we go. All right. So let's start by scaling up our funnel. I kind of want this to be pretty big, I think. And then from there, let's thin this out. Let's see, what's gonna be the best way to do this? Probably just mask and, or actually before I do this, let's put a hole in the middle of this. So grab your Z modeler brush, hover over a point and do a split operation. And just like that, we'll do that on both sides. And just tap and we'll do it at the same scale. And then we can hold space over a face, Q mesh and you mesh out these polygons completely. So now when I press the D key, always yes, that's showing me what this looks like when it's smoothed out, uh, as if I were subdividing it. Uh, you can do something similar to this in uh, Blender with what is called just smooth shading. You can do this in Maya and Max and Modo and everything. But when you activate shaded smooth mode, 
it doesn't actually affect the geometry. So the geometry is not actually being smooth. And we'll go back to shade flat here. The same thing is true here in ZBrush. The actual geometry, even though it looks like it's changing and moving, is not actually being you know, smoothed or subdivided. This is just a pre-visualization of what that looks like. What's actually happening here is that the, uh, the normals where the normals of a polygon, if you guys know what that means, are being uh, shaded in such a way that it's kind of blending between those two hard edges. So in here, we want to create actual geometry. So I think we're gonna start off by sliding our funnel down, actually making a funnel shape, right? It's kind of important. And let's go ahead and crease out this top edge. So we'll hover over an edge, hold spacebar, select crease edge loop complete. Click that. All right. We pretty much already got our funnel, but we can kind of take it a little bit further if we want. I think, let's see here. What do we want to do? We probably want some kind of Eh, I, you know what, I don't think we really need a lip to this too much, but what we could do is maybe create like a little entrance ramp or something for this uh, and kind of make it a little asymmetrical. So let's try doing that. So let's hold spacebar on this outside edge, do extrude, and we want poly loop. And then we'll just see that orange line there. You want that to be facing towards the direction you want the loop to go. And just click and drag, pull that out. And then from there, let's see how that's shaping up. I'm just gonna quickly mask off all of this, I think. Actually, how do I wanna do this? I'm trying to think how I can get the actual lip to blend in. Here, I got an idea. So let's mask off all these corners, all these little points on the outside slide them up a little bit. I want this extra little piece of edge loop geometry here. And then I'm gonna go back to the Z modeler brush and I'm gonna do an extrude, but I think only on a single polygon this time. Hmm. Let's see. So let's pull this out. I'm trying to think what's the best way that I wanna do this. I wanna get like a track that's like jutting off. I could just make this as a sec separate piece. We could also, whoops, delete that edge. Hmm, and have that slide in that way. Hmm, so many ways to do this. We could also add like a few, like, uh, like, what would you call them? Obstructions of some kind to make it our marble race more, more interesting. I say we just keep our funnel how it is for now. I think this is probably fine. And we'll just have the uh, track lead into it in such a way that it makes sense. So I think from here, I'm just gonna add a couple subdivisions just to smooth this out a little bit so it's not such a bumpy ride. And let's uncrease this bottom edge. We want that to be more smooth. All right. And maybe a little bit less, uh, less steep. I want them to spin around for a while, have enough time to bump into each other. All right, so I'll just add in a couple subdivision levels and delete those, and then we can import our funnel. Uh, like smoothing groups. Uh, yes, like smoothing groups in Blender, but uh, you're not actually setting up your groups. You're just doing a uh, object-wide smooth mod. Uh, much like in Maya, I think it's the three key, if I remember correct, it's been a while, but uh, just right click in Blender 2.8 and shade smooth. Uh, this is something that I did on, I do not have it imported right now, but I essentially created a 
studio render setup to where it had this plain bevel where it swooped in the back. Sorry, I just smashed my microphone. I'm sure that sounded great. <laughs> where it like wraps around to the back, kind of like a uh, curtain that you would photograph some, some object or person uh, on top of. Uh, and then you just apply a smooth group to that so you don't actually need to like bevel that super uh, like a ton and have a lot of extra geometry in there. Essentially it just makes it uh, a little bit cleaner for the render. Well, let's see, we got our quick little funnel here. What, what else did we want to make? A ramp? Let me make a ramp next. That should be pretty easy. Uh, love the studio setups. Yeah, they were, they're pretty fun and really easy to do. Just a three point lighting setup. My tea is going everywhere. We can maybe look at that again if people have any questions about lighting or setting that kind of stuff up. I'm just very quickly going to, let's see, I guess we'll just create a quick ramp here going into our funnel. The way, uh, there's a ton of different ways to do this. So you could grab your Z modeler brush, hold space, and go to insert poly loop, poly loop, as long as you're hovering over a face to an edge and insert some poly loops this way. There's also a quick cheat for inserting poly loops that's really cool. You can hold control and shift, come up here and select your slice curve brush and just create a slice across your geometry and create some quick edge loops. But they're not super straight, right? You have to be a little accurate with them. So maybe you can line up with, with your edge here if you need to like figure it out and get your edge loop where you want it to go. It's up to you. There's a ton of different ways to do everything in here, but real quick, let's just rotate this and start setting up our quick ramp. Now the main problem that I foresee here is that for our ramp, the, uh, oh boy, what happened here? Let's, uh, let's undo a few times and take a step back. So for some reason, when adding in those poly loops, ZBrush freaked out and uh, triangulated some of our mesh. So let me try that one more time. Insert poly loop, poly loop. It's not triangulating now, so I'm really not sure what uh, what ZBrush was thinking there. It actually is a little bit. Let's undo. Why are you freaking out on me? This is why sometimes I'll just slice my geometry. I want to see where it's where it's bugging out. So it's put a poly loop there for some reason. It's really freaking out, I don't know. Let me do this manually. This is why we have a million ways to do everything. Manual poly loops, that's okay. This will for sure not put in that weird geometry that we saw happening there. Also, I, uh, I polygroup everything as one polygroup before I export it to Blender. I don't know if this is how it works in Blender, uh, but it does this in a lot of other programs, so I just kind of do it out of habit. Uh, it will sometimes group your polygroups that you have set up here uh, because OBJs can export that data, and it will sometimes interpret that as separate objects. I don't want that to be the case, though. So. I'm not sure, I haven't tested it or played around with it very much, so I really can't speak to it too well, but just out of habit, I think it's best to hedge your bets, and if you really need those polygroups for some reason, maybe you can play around with it more yourself. Alright, so let's see how our ramp is shaping up here. Probably need like a little, I'm trying to get it to be a little bit more smooth as it leads into the ramp here because I don't want it to be super bumpy. And of course we could add a sub div or something to this to make it a little bit more chill. So it's not quite as like, that's a, that's a word, I'm sure. <laughs> David, what's going on, man? Uh, unstoppable, it's day one. <laughs> day one of 2019. Time to play some 3D, that's right. 
My favorite game, though. Gotta, gotta keep playing. And good afternoon as well. Dan, what's going on, man? How you doing? All right. So we have hard surface modeled, a very simple track, a very simple funnel, and a very simple ramp. We need to import our ramp and our funnel. I'm worried that this will be too bumpy. What do you guys think? Maybe add like one subdiv or something, or let's uh let's like maybe make it like a little bit less uh less like um immediate. So like give it a little bit more room to to ramparoonie. Ramparoonie is also a word. Something like that. Uh, so if I wanted to subdivide this and I still wanted to keep those hard edges there, uh, what we could do is grab our Z modeler brush again, hover over the edges that we want to retain and run a crease edge loop function and just crease over top of a few of these. So I'll do that really quick here. Just crease the edges that I know that we want to retain to be hard surface. We got most of them already. ZBrush is being very uh, strange with some of the edge loops here, but that's okay. So you can see how much more smooth that's looking. I'll turn on perspective to make this a little bit easier to make out what's happening. The transition here is still a little sharp, so I think I'll add in an extra edge loop just to make this not transition quite as hard. Also, I need to turn off perspective when I rotate because it'll probably mess some stuff up if I don't. All right, so I'll just add in a couple sub divs there. That shouldn't be too crazy. The only thing that I'm worried about is that if I do a uh, mesh uh, collision on this rigid as a rigid body, 2,000 polys might be way too high for something like that. I, I don't know like the limits of Blender's rigid bodies, but we're gonna find out today. So, control W on that, control W on that, and let me just uh, export these really quick. So, we'll call this track ramp, and this will be our track funnel. And we can go back to Blender ski and file import. Wavefront OBJ. Grab our track ramp. Whoops, come on back. Which came in upside down, of course. It's only natural. And let's move that into position. So the, uh, the pivot point for this is like really far off. And if you go to object set origin, origin to geometry, you can uh, center that. There's a hotkey for that in the older version of Blender that I found online that is like control alt shift C or something like that. It doesn't, it doesn't work for me though in this version of Blender. Uh, I might have to be in like modeling mode or something. I, I really don't know. All right, let's import our funnel next. We'll also need to set up some, some physics on these. We can test them out. Wave front, not the ramp. That's my bad. Funnel, funnel boy, yes. Set origin, uh, origin to geometry. These planes here that I have set up, these are just lights. We can just hide these for now and probably delete them. We don't really need them. Now for this, I do actually want this to be perfectly aligned here. So what would that be? 270, is that right? Nine times three, 27. 70. All right, 
So we probably don't want the funnel or the ramp leading directly into a funnel for like a dunk right in the middle. <laughs> but let's uh, set up some rigid body physics on these just to see if they work. Uh, I'm gonna make some ugly boys until it's night again. Uh, still gonna have this stream up. Some ugly boys, that sounds like fun. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I'm into it. Uh, have you lost your marbles? Not yet. I, well, I only have one marble left. But luckily, we can make more marbles. Right, I'm gonna set this transform to the middle of that as well. Let's see if we can get this ramp to work. See how this goes. I'm gonna become the the leading marble racer, marble streamer, whatever the fuck it's called. All right, rigid body, non-dynamic. I think I set this to five. Yeah. I don't know how fast this will. Oh no, wait, hold on. I need to set this to a mesh collider, and hopefully this won't like lag a ton. We'll see. We'll see what it does. Oh boy, beautiful, perfect. I couldn't imagine it being any better. All right, so let's do some positioning here. It looked like it was floating a little bit as well. So that's no, that's no boy now. We don't want that. We need to figure out what we did wrong. You go away. My angles, my angles are all wrong. This doesn't have to be perfectly aligned. Hmm. I can maybe make this bigger, just like scale it up to make it longer. I want to see... See how it's floating on top of it? That might be a problem with scale in the scene. Scale or maybe mass. Because I experienced this problem with some of the rigid body physics earlier when I was playing with this by myself last week. And they act, the physics act very strange when you're at a smaller scale in Blender. I don't know if that's the case for 2.8. At least I have had this issue. Let's just scale things up and see if that makes a difference. Come back. How to scale. Come on, marble. Be a marble. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, so now the problem is with this probably being too heavy. Too much of a is it missing? Is it just missing? Am I, am I lying? Am I wrong? So if your mass is like screwed up on some of your stuff, it'll like break down how it works. Guys, everything's broken now. We scaled it up just by a little bit. And it said no. Oh. Well, at least it was hitting it before. <laughs> Here, let me try uh, deleting the, the rigid body physics on these. Let me try to just recreate them here. So, make sure that that's not moving. That's fine. All right, rigid body. We do want that to be dynamic. We'll just keep the default one kilogram. Okay. So that's how that should be acting. And then here, rigid body, non-dynamic, so it doesn't fall down with gravity. And we'll just keep that on one kilogram as well. Okay, so it did hit it. That is what we want. But that's because we have a convex hull. 
We want the mesh collision. Make some ugly boys in ZBrush? Well, of course, where else would you make some ugly boys? Casually derp, what's going on? Having it fall into the curve would be pretty cool and uh, give it that extra momentum, kind of like Peggle. Peggle, is that the game, is that like the mobile game with the horse thing or whatever? It's like got the pins and the ball like falls between them, right? Isn't that what I'm thinking of? I do, there's like a horse, or no, it's a unicorn. I was cl- oh, what the f is that? <laughs> there we go, this. Yeah, that's a horse. That is definitely a horse. I See, I know what I'm talking about, guys. <laughs> All right. Um, you think it's the collision shape set to convex hull? Uh, it wasn't set to convex hull before. Now it is mesh. So when it's a mesh collider, it seems to fall through. It wasn't doing that at the, uh, the smaller scale, though. So I wonder why that is. It looks like it works when it is a convex hull. But the convex hull is not an accurate, uh, representation of the geometry. Plus, it's freaking out. Oh, but the, uh, the mesh collider is working on this. Five kilograms. Maybe that's what we need. These are literally the only settings that I've messed with, is mass and the uh, shape of the collider. So that should, that should be working. Is it like a problem with it falling too fast? Ah, okay. <laughs> Very nice. So I think there, I think the mass is maybe too high for something like this. So maybe we can set this to like 500 grams or something. And then let's just see if this will hit everything. Oh, did you see that? It like started to go so fast that it fell through. So I think the mass of the platforms maybe just needs to be a lot higher so that uh, there's not a chance that it will fly through. Oh, it still did it. Oh, sad day. Sad, sad day. All right, let's see if we can maybe align that to fly a little bit nicer. It looks like it falls through right there at the end. That has to be a, uh, a speed thing. So maybe we just, I don't know if the math needs to be lower on the ball or if it needs to be higher. We'll see if it still does it here. Still falling through. Hmm. Oh, maybe it's because I have a convex hull shape collider on the ball. Oh. <laughs> Come back. Is there like a sphere collider? There we go. Oh. Okay. He still wants to, uh, to fly through. Does it go through if it's going too fast? That is that is the case from what I can tell. All right, let's try again here. Cause we need to get to our funnel. This is gonna be the best part after we do a cool jump. All right, let's try, I'm just gonna try it like really upping the mass on the, um, the stationary platform. So, from what I saw online, you can you can make this a collision. You can use collision physics with this, but I, I don't know, I can't remember why. Um, I think it's maybe like less resource intensive if it's a rigid body physics without dynamic turned on so that gravity doesn't affect it. I'm not sure if that's actually the case. I don't know, maybe we can try it. I haven't really done too much with the collision physics just because I uh, I haven't really, I don't even know if collision physics interact with rigid body. 
What do we have this set to? Like 50? So it's definitely a uh, speed thing. It doesn't seem like the mass is actually affecting whether it flies through or not. You set your non-moving parts to zero. It looks like it cannot set it to zero. It does not look like that is an option. And it actually doesn't look like it's affecting whether or not it, um, it will um, slide through or not. So it might have to do with just the physics of our sphere. And I don't know if making this heavier or lighter will mess with that or not. So we can maybe just try like really cranking this up to like, I don't know, 150 or something. See what happens. See what shenanigans we can get into. Oh, still does the exact same thing. Maybe we just kind of deal with it and set our ramp up in such a way to get this working. I have a feeling it'll fly through the ramp. Oh, nope. <laughs> our marble sim, guys. Our marble sim is falling apart. It looks like uh, our kilogram effects are like, however much we change this by isn't really doing too much. We'll just turn off friction. I think that that's probably the best option, right? <laughs> hey, it worked. It worked, all right? I don't want to hear it. We'll, we'll get this. We will cheat this. We, we don't need real world physics. We'll just make up our own. I will line writer this and figure out exactly. Let's see, how do I step forward? One frame. Can I not step forward one frame? Oh, yes I can. All right, one arrow key at a time. Ooh, I lined it up pretty well. Oh, we got it, we got it. We got the, we got the money, all right. It's beautiful. <laughs> Beautifully terrible. All right, so from here, I think what I'm gonna do, let's see, how do I do, how do I blender? I really don't know how to blender very well. That's okay, we'll, we'll get this. I'm gonna give a little bit more lead time on our, on our dude here, on our ramp. Oh yeah. Guys, I'm a blender master now. By blender master, I mean I am jerry-rigging so many things together right now. Oh, that was so unsatisfying. <laughs> it did it did go the right direction though. It did work a little bit. All right, let's try a little bit less friction or something. See what happens. Oh, come on. All right, you know what? This reality does not need friction. We got this. <laughs> this is so bad. Look, mainly I just wanted to show off some hard surface modeling techniques since some people were asking about that yesterday. And now we're, we're frictioning. It's perfect, okay. That cannot get any better. It's literally impossible. It's perfect. All right. So from here, <laughs> let's just try to get our funnel working. Let's see if we can like set all this up. I'm gonna, I'll just move our camera out of the way for now. We don't even need our camera. Here, we're gonna try. We can try ramping into the funnel. Sure. Right? Why not? Very hard to see where our ball is. All right, I need to catch this. Oh, this is it, guys. This is where where the fun begins. All right, so rigid body, 
I don't think the mass will matter, and let's just do a mesh collider and see if it catches it. Oh, goodbye. All right. Here, let's uh, let's make our ball a different color so that we can actually see what's happening. Since everything's kind of blending together, I'll just make that red real quick for now. Okay, changing the material breaks everything. That's good to know. <laughs> And right through, right through our funnel. Perfect. This is exactly what I expect. <laughs> I have a feeling that the ball is uh, going too fast for our beautiful frictionless world. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. No. <laughs> Here, wait, 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 wait. Maybe if we can catch it at the apex. It won't be quite as bad. Won't be going Mach 100. No! <laughs> Guys, I've used Blender for all of like three hours. <laughs> Is there a super sampling option? You're asking the wrong person, my dude. It looks like maybe my uh, keyframe data is like pre-baked or something. I don't know what that orange line means. Let me just try giving that a wiggle. Cool, can't click during an animation, I guess. Can rotate the camera though. Uh, also, we're missing now. I don't know if the. Yeah. I moved the ball a little bit. Wait, what? I don't know why that just happened. I pressed undo and it. Cool. This is this is great. This is exactly what I wanted. Can I not move this while it's animating or something? Our ramp kind of sucks now, but that's okay. We're just trying to make the uh, the funnel work. It didn't even, it didn't even funnel. It did not even funnel. It said, F this funnel. It said, your funnel sucks. It hates our funnel. Hmm, what should we do to our funnel to maybe make it not so, not so butt? How can we make our ball work with our funnel? See, so, okay, so it does work as long as the ball is not going too fast. So let's do a quick, a quick goggle. In, into the blender verse. Blender. Body. Hmm. Rigid body passing through each other. Oh yeah, stack exchange. This is this is my jam. Object scale hasn't been applied. Oh, of course. You idiot. <laughs> Um, setting triangle mesh is required. Of course, I knew that. How do I, how do I do that? How do I do that stack exchange? Um. Uh. 
object scale hasn't been applied. Of course. Clear and apply. Apparently this is a thing. Um... Clear location, Alt G. Let's see if this works. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. Apply object transformations. That sounds like a thing that I want to do. Hmm. Hmm. Does anybody know how to do that? You think you can't? The funnel has a rigid body on it. I, I'm trying to apply these transforms. I would, is there an option in here to do that? Object transform. Oh, I found you. Stack exchange is useless. <laughs> no, stack exchange is great. All right, is there just an apply all? All transforms to deltas. Of course, I don't know if this will actually, you know, do anything or work. Goodbye, one ball. Goodbye, two ball. So that doesn't work. The uh, speed of the object is still flying through. So, that was fun. <laughs> Seagull Rush, what's going on? <laughs> is this ZBrush 2019? <laughs> no, we, uh, we poly modeled all this stuff in ZBrush though. Uh, so if anybody has any questions about hard surface modeling, feel free to ask away and we can we can, once we get our physics working, we can create as many cool track pieces as we want. We can maybe even like animate some spinning traps of doom. Oops, come back. Oh no wait, that's not Blender. <laughs> we need to fi figure out why our physics are not working though. In ZBrush, or in Z, I'm not sure if you're talking about the Z axis or Z brush. Is there, a, a, is there any way to make a polygon that is rotated in the X, Y, Z axis face the camera? Uh, do you mind explaining that a little bit differently so that I can understand? So if I have a piece of geometry like this, David, one thing that you can do is press uh, R on your keyboard and for this you want to use your not your 3d gizmo which is the default one you want to use your transpose line and as long as you have a flat normal piece of geometry you can click that and your transpose line will snap to that so your transpose line is now facing directly up and down so what I can do now is I can if I want this to face the camera I can rotate to the side here as long as rotate selected, click this top inner red circle to rotate. And now if I hold shift, it'll snap to every uh, 22.5 degrees. And by default, it does that. And then you can rotate that to that perfect 90. And now I have that facing the camera. I'm not sure if that's what you mean, but that's one quick way to do that. In ZBrush. Casually derp, what do we got? If you go into the Scene tab in the Properties window, Scene tab, the Scene, Scene tab in the Properties window, in Preferences, Scene tab in the Properties window. Maybe you mean this scene. Uh, increase the steps per second. That should help prevent some of your smaller objects from falling through the bigger ones, maybe. Steps per second. All right, let's find steps per second rigid body world steps per second i found you let's try it let's try doubling it 
I don't know if this will break my computer or not. We will find out. Oh boy. The ball flew a lot faster. And it looked like it had some, uh... It looks like it has some, uh, smear frames happening. It kind of does. It is unfortunately still whoosh, flying right on through. Good try, David. It was a good, good attempt. Maybe, maybe we need to crank it even further. Let's blast this. Or that is not, that was actually lower. All right. <laughs> Master blasted to 500. That's so many steps. Wow. Okay. I wonder why that's uh flying out there like that. The moment we've all been waiting for. Will it swirl? No, it won't. All right. It's fine. We'll we'll get it. We'll get it. I think that's maybe, we'll, we'll put that like on 120. That seemed to work pretty, pretty well. Um, Nuclear Dan says steps per second as well. Do I need to just like crank this really high or something? Uh, you'll have to check the transform tool again. Oh. I don't know what that means. <laughs> let's see. Re let's just remove the rigid body world, guys. Let's screw it. Screw these rigid bodies. Let's, um... Number of constraint solver iterations made per simulation step. Higher values are more accurate. Slower. Oh, it did it. Guys, it, it did the same thing. Hmm. I don't know. I, th I thought it was maybe like a mass issue because that's uh, where my problem was before. Can I open up two blender scenes at once? I'm guessing I can, right? Here's a Blender physics sim that I made before. It was just very simple that I copied off of, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Blender Guru on YouTube. It's just rigid body physics sim. It's very, very simple. It's also very slow. Uh, but the uh, problem that I had was that stuff was like falling through each other. And after messing with the mass of my objects, it ended up working um, perfectly. So I don't know if it's like a mass issue or what. This is also a, uh, a lighting setup that I made last week and showed it off yesterday on the stream. So if anybody has any questions about uh, studio lighting or setting up like three point lighting setups, I can probably answer a couple questions about that. A lot of that info is transferable between uh, a lot of different programs. But let's see, hmm. What could we change here? That's making our scene a big, a big dumb. Hmm. Instead of waiting for that, let's just move this sphere up. Figure out, whoop, right on through. So it's definitely a speed issue. Let's see, is the slow object working? The slow object, so as long as the sphere isn't going over a certain speed, it will collide properly. Once it hits terminal velocity, or at some point it starts to freak out. And uh, changing my mass actually doesn't make the ball fall any slower. So I have a feeling that when I'm changing these settings, they're maybe like not applying or something. Cause like, there's like a thousand kilograms. This should fall instantly. It's falling at the same speed. 
So is there something that I need to change to like apply the physics? I do not know. Hmm. Uh, it has to do with how the way Blender does physics, since it does the physics per frame, hence why changing the steps affects the physics. Too bad there's no continuous option like Unity. So maybe uh, we just need to like turn the steps back down to whatever they were before. Was it 60? And then just worry about the mass. Look, you guys are supposed to be the Blender masters. I'm just here showing some hard surface stuff and now we're trying to now we're trying to figure out some physics one you're allowed to do one step every second <laughs> that was perfect all right i don't know i think i'm on like 24 frames a second some, guys it's impossible it's just not it's not doable Hmm. This should be uh, changing at the fall speed here. I'm not sure why it's in that. Maybe I should open up that scene back up. It looks like the uh, convex hull actually does work, no matter what the speed is set to. So maybe there's something happening with the mesh collider that I need to change. Mesh. Maybe set this to... Different option here. What do these do? Base mesh. That sounds like what I have. Okay. <laughs> we can go back to hard surface modeling for a while. Uh, try 500 in each. You don't think there's any air friction. Try 500 what? What should we try 500 in? Let me know and we can try it out. Uh, but I put the mass on 1000 kilograms and uh, nothing changed. Nothing changed at all. It's okay. I mainly wanted to show off hard surface modeling today. That was the whole reason why we're... I just thought it would be fun if we could use our hard surface models that we created to maybe create something a little fun and interesting. But it turns out that a lot of our physics are kind of pooping, pooping on us. Not working. Not wanting to work at least. Yeah. Alright, let's, let's, go, let's go back to hard surface mode here. You're so invested in this now. Steps per second and iterations. All right, we can try it. Steps per second and iterations. Or, yes. So those are both on 500. All right, Dan is going to solve our, our physics riddle. I'm sorry, Dan. The ball still fell right through. Boop. Dan, what's what's your next puzzle puzzle solve for us? <laughs> Don't be sad. Don't be sad. It, you're at a loss as well. Welcome to the club. Uh, calculations per second, so lowering it makes it more likely to fall through since the object has more space between the frames to fall through. That's it, guys. We're we're. We're blasting it. <laughs> 5,000. Goodbye. Nope. Still still freaking out. Definitely not the uh, the problem there. I think this was on 60 and 10. All right. Guys, it's not it's not solvable. I'm sorry. Physics is just broken in my world. I did uh 
Now hold on. We did. We did do a thing to these. That shouldn't matter. I turned the friction way down, but that shouldn't... That shouldn't cause it to, like, completely break. Oh, yeah. That's all I can say about it. Just... <laughs> Alright, let's try hard surface and or polymodeling some more things. You're, you're downloading Blender 2.8 right now. Alright, Dan. You solved this. You solved this riddle. And we will get back to it. Alright, so what's the next cool little track piece that we can make? Hmm. I don't really know how to actually animate things in Blender. Like I said, I've only played with it a couple hours. But I, I definitely know that's possible. So it'd be cool if we made like some kind of obstacle, like little windmill or something like that to play with. Who knows if we'll ever actually get it to work. But that's, you know, that's a problem for later. That's future Ben's problem, you know. I don't need to worry about that. So let's just grab ourselves a cube. A very simple cube and we can make some kind of we can make more track pieces or we can do what I'm about to do and grab our Z modeler brush do some extrusions Let's just extrude a single poly and again if you guys don't know how to do this grab your Z modeler brush B Z M hold space over a face bar or hold <laughs> the face bar, my brain. Hold your mouse over a face, hold the space bar, and choose extrude. All right, this is going to be our obstacle. And I was thinking this could be just something simple that like, whoops, spins and hits the marbles away or something like that. Let's actually, here, let's scale this down and maybe make those The uh, scale of my scene in Blender is now larger. Might be a problem with the scale of my scene actually for the physics. But I was told to actually make things bigger to make it more accurate because Blender has trouble with smaller scenes. I don't know, maybe that's something we want to play with. All right, so that's a very simple, simple obstacle. But we could maybe make it more, more interesting. And this could just be something that we, maybe this could be something that like spins and while it's spinning it like slides up and down inside of, whoops, inside of one of these stage runes. Whoops. So while spinning, because we can't animate things easily in ZBrush, there are some tricks though. So while that's spinning around, it could also be like bobbing up and down. You gotta avoid it. And by avoid it, I mean the marbles have to avoid it because the marbles have so much control over what they do. Uh, a cool way in ZBrush, some more hard surface modeling tips and tricks. You can hold the spacebar over a face and select Q mesh. And with Q mesh, you can click and slide a polygon away. You can also hollow out polygons uh, and delete other poly. Like it's just a, a cool little thing. It also extrudes. Uh, it does a, a bunch of cool little cool little things. It's pretty neat. Did you apply the subsurface modifier to the funnel? I did not apply a subsurface modifier. I uh, imported this directly from ZBrush. Exactly how you see it in here. No changes, no changes at all. Do I need to like tessellate it or do something like that? Triangulate this bad boy? Might be something I need to do to all of these. I can <laughs> count on you. All right, solve our, solve our physics riddle. You can do it. I believe in you. All right, so we can, we'll call this, or I'll just export this real quick. What What else do we wanna make? What are some hard surface ZBrush questions that you guys have that we can answer? 
It can be completely unrelated. I've been doing hard surface stuff in ZBrush for a while. Ever since the Z Modeler brush came out. Or actually, before that, just uh, less effectively. Now the Z Modeler brush makes things a lot easier. Oh, by the way, the way I'm creating these perfect cubes. There's a really, you can just duplicate any anything in your scene and then come down to initialize. As long as it doesn't have any subdivs, you can do this. And just click on any of these options. If you want to give it more resolution, you can mess with some of those sliders and uh, give yourself some, uh, some little subdivs in there. I don't really like to do that though. I typically, if I'm just making a cube, I'll just make a straight up six sided face cubed. And then if I need to, from there, I will add in any poly loops that I need. But I like to have more control. Just start off with a basic cube and build up from there, depending on what I'm trying to make. So this is actually how I made, I guess really quick we can look at, let's see, I think I got them here. Since we have been looking at Android for the past two weeks, plus our break last week. Whoa, zoom out. Well, that's fun. <laughs> so uh, I poly modeled a bunch of stuff on this guy. I like, here, I'm going to perspective. I poly modeled his belt buckle here. And oh, I don't, I deleted the subdivs on this, but I poly modeled the belt buckle all that. Um, poly modeled his socks down here. So these are you know, just really simple, well, maybe not simple pieces of geometry, but pretty simple pieces of geometry that were just started off as cylinders that we added some edge loops in and uh, did some deformation to, to eventually build up to the shape that we have here. Uh, I poly modeled a bunch of stuff on his shoes as well. But that stuff has been now sliced up and um, changed quite a bit. I actually did do some poly modeling on the scarf, but now that's not really uh, visible because I've done a lot of uh, different stuff here as well. But yeah, if you guys have any questions about uh, any kind of poly modeling, hard surface, Z modeler stuff, let me know. I think this hair was as well. Just low res tubes of geometry, subdivisions textures, all that good stuff. I actually want to do more stuff on the hair of this character, just like a little bit more texture, but for now, I think I'm just gonna leave it and at least try to start uh, setting up some, some textures and materials in Blender to try rendering this guy. I would like to uh, make this guy the first character that I try rendering in Blender. I've been using Keyshot for a while, but I wanted to play around with, uh, with Blender for a while see if we can get some good results. So far I've gotten some some pretty nice results just with a clay render. I, I've shown off the scene a couple of times but we can maybe look at it again as well. Um, the Z modeler is so cool but don't forget gizmo transform transformations. Uh, I think you're talking about the deformations in ZBrush. Transformations are just you know transforming. Translate, rotate, scale, all that. 3D Gizmo, if you click on this gear icon, I'm not sure if this is what you're talking about, but there's a bunch of different deformations in here that you can mess with. The one that I use uh, a lot that I like to play with for certain uh, quick like little things, uh, like if you have a fish or something like that, for instance, uh, there's a bunch of new ones in here, so I have to look for it. There is a bend curve modifier, so if you have a fish, here, let's maybe... Real quick. Just so you can see this, see what it looks like. So, uh, let's say this is our, our fish, right? I know, beautiful, beautiful little fish. <laughs> Just for an example, really quick. Uh, there, one of the cool things that I like to do is come into your uh, uh, 3D gizmo, click on the gear, click on bend curve, 
And essentially what you can do is instead of taking the time to like manually pose your fish, you can use the bend curve feature to create uh, like a little swimming uh, line of action going on here. So we can take our, let's see, what is it? Our axis here and change that to the correct direction. And then we can grab our resolution slider and click and pull on that. And let's just do a few points here in the middle. And then all you have to do is click and drag on these and you can get your bend curve modifier. This works really well with hair uh, too. So if you have some like tubes of hair that you wanna start modifying, uh, instead of using like a lattice to deform those or using a move brush, you could come in here and play with these sliders as well. And what's great about this, depending on the resolution that you choose for your um, separations, you can get some, some pretty good results. So let's maybe, whoops, lower our resolution to like just three. So if you wanna do something really simple for your fish, you could start off something like this, let's say. And then you can add in additional resolution and it will keep it in the same shape and we'll put the dots like where they need to be so you can you know, spice up your curves. Start playing with those a little bit more. Try to get some more visually interesting shapes. So like I said, this works really well for just like quick little poses or for hair or if you got a fish <laughs> for something specific. Uh, I've used it for, for that, so that's why I mention it. Uh, and then all you have to do is click on your little gear icon and click accept, and that'll bake in the deformation into that. There's a ton of these deformations to play with. Uh, in ZBrush 2018, they added uh, a bunch of new ones. So definitely check those out if that's something that you have neglected in your, your studies. I just spit on my Cintiq. <laughs> the subsurface modifier. Hmm. Bend, not blend. What did I miss? Did someone solve our physics riddle in Blender? Because, because our physics riddle is, I don't think it's, I feel like it's just like a, some, something really stupid and easy, like make everything really big because scale Fs with the physics. Everything just fell through. So that was nice. All right. Maybe, oh, okay. All right, this is, I, I thought maybe it was a scale issue. Oh my God, please stop. Just, just, just get small, just get small. Guys, it hit it. Holy butt. Oh my god. This stupid thing. It did it. It did it, guys. But also it fell like super, super fast. And I just unhit everything. I didn't mean to. This stupid program. <laughs> it's not stupid. But uh, things are falling like way faster now. Guys, we might be able to get back in and play with our physics. Maybe. Let's try a tenth of that. It is working. That's amazing. Okay. Let's delete that one. I We might have just solved all of our problems. Let's try 0.01. No, none of our problems are solved because the ball speed has not changed and it's still going stupid fast, no matter what this is set to. Maybe it's just a friction problem. Okay. Now we have new problems. That's how it works though. You, you solve one problem and then you get 10 more. <laughs> uh, Final Fox says, did I miss Android 18? Uh, no, you did not. I'm actually not streaming Android 18. 
I, uh, I'm creating Android 8, uh, this is Android 17, but I am creating Android 18. Uh, this, the original 2D concept is by um, the artist Gop Gap, but I will be creating his Android. I don't have the image imported. Let me find it here. I have it somewhere. There she blows. So there we go. So Android 17, obviously, which I am right there. Uh, and Android 18. I am going to make Android 18, but for uh, for something else. I will not have the opportunity to stream that one. Uh, but I will have more info on that on that later. Let's see here. All right, what do you guys think? Some more hard surface stuff. We can get it. We can delete our worm, our worm fish that we made. That was fun. <laughs> that monstrosity. Uh, when did you pick up Blender? Last week. I uh, I literally picked it up last week, and um, the reason I picked it up was so that I could make this. I posted some images of this on Twitter last week, and I showed it off yesterday because a bunch of people were asking about my lighting setup. So I really just wanted to get into Blender and try making a quick uh, studio lighting scene, which we'll update here in just a moment for you guys so you can check out what that looks like. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really simple. Uh, I can talk about this if you guys have any questions, but there's the render coming in. This is just a test model that I exported. I decimated it in ZBrush. It's like five million polys. It's not super heavy, nothing crazy. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Fun to play with and uh, super simple lighting setup. Just a three point lighting setup, pretty standard. Uh, pretty much the same in like every program that you'll ever, ever use. Here is the uh, smooth mod somebody was asking about. Here we can like get a close up on this guy so you guys can see how that lighting's looking. Looking pretty good. There's also some environment stuff that you can do here to make that um, a little bit more, um, or I'm sorry, not more, but less less contrasted. So it's not quite as strong there. But yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. That's the whole reason I, I played around with this last week. It literally took me like an hour to set up this scene and uh, a little extra time to like look up how to like add an object to stuff, like how to do simple things. Other than that, you know, it's really easy. It's not, it's nothing, nothing fancy, nothing super complicated. Uh, how big is your marble? My dude, my marble, my marble, it's the biggest marble, the biggest marble you've ever seen. I, I don't know. Is there like a world space modifier that I can look at? Let's see. My marble is very, very tiny in the world scale because I just scaled everything down and that actually made the physics work. We can scale things back up though. Uh, this is the scale from the original ball. I don't know how to see the world coordinates um, for an object. Is there a way to display that? So like how big the marble is in, uh, in relation to the world. Because all of these were imported from ZBrush. The marble was just a quick, uh, what's it called? The UV sphere, I think. Mesh UV sphere. But other than that, I do not know how to find the world size, world scale. Uh, I read a thing that said you want 20 centimeters minimum. Uh, yeah, actually, so, I don't know what the default measurement is in uh, in Blender. I don't know how to tell how big something is in uh, centimeters, meters, and all that. 
Typically, um, in 3D space, there are no real world measurements, but a lot of software will give you a measurement to make you feel feel you make you feel safe and uh, at right. Um, like Maya does that, and Maya just totally BSs you. Uh, ZBrush kind of does that. ZBrush ZBrush kind of tells you straight up. It's just like, nah, dude, this is units, because that's like all 3D data is. Um, if you export an OBJ. Uh, at a specific scale and import it into Maya, uh, it might end up being, depending on where you exported it from, it might end up being really like 10 times bigger or like 10 times smaller, just because uh, I think I think Maya uses kilometers by default or centimeters. I think they use centimeters by default. I can't remember. I cannot remember. So if you uh, export like OBJ data and open up the OBJ with uh, like Notepad or something, there's nothing in there that says like this is inches or centimeters or meters or whatever. It's just you know how many units it is, how many units each point is away from each other. Astronomical units. That's correct. <laughs> uh, you think the default cube is 100? All right. Let's add in a cube, mesh cube. All right. I also don't know how to translate my 3D cursor. So if anybody wants to tell me how to do that, keeps, uh, keeps going up there. So you think the default is 100 centimeters. So that's what you believe this is. So is there a way to display How, um, is this it? Is there a way to display the actual measurements of an object? Oh, whoa, what is this? <laughs> uh, measure distance and angles, neat. Uh, it looks like this is two meters. Two meters by two meters by two meters, roughly. So, how do I make that go away now? Great, that just lives there now. That's fine. <laughs> All right, so what'd you say? It needs to be, you read a thing that said you want 20 centimeter minimum. So we are at just under 20 centimeters, right? That's 12 centimeters, is that correct? Did my brain do that correctly? So maybe we need to scale that up. How do I, nope, that's just there forever, I think. I cannot undo that. This is fine, this is my life now, okay. <laughs> uh. It just looks like a cube. <laughs> Happy New Year, man. All right, so let's... Uh, I, I, tried, I tried doing the scale. I tried, I tried making it larger and it didn't work. Why can't I select that? <clears throat> All right, huh. cool. We can try one more time with the physics until somebody else comes up. Oh. Oh yeah, perfect. Until somebody comes up with a, uh, a new idea for a solution to make our physics work. So that should be, wait, 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 what is this? Ah, that's snapping. I thought maybe I could show real world measurements. All right, that is above 20 centimeters now. Okay. Neat. So it's hitting the track. That's what we had before. It comes to a complete stop at our ramp. So what we ended up doing to fix that, I just turned down the friction and on the object. We can maybe do that again a little bit. Uh, 
All right. So it did hit the um, the funnel this time, but what didn't happen was we weren't going super fast. Okay, so that time it just flew straight through everything. And I believe that's a problem with how fast the object is going. So, either that or just friction is, you know, we need to keep that friction set and we only need to play with our mass. But what I was experiencing was that whenever I affected the mass of an object, it did not actually change how quickly it was falling. So there's that, and now here's 15 kilograms. And it should do the exact same thing. Oh, it didn't, it didn't this time. Good job, Blender. You did, you did a different, you did a different one. Um, we're playing with this earlier, nothing I changed in the, uh, the weight was really doing anything. So maybe we just need to find that, that sweet spot. What did I have? I think I had five. Ooh, that's, yeah, that's a beautiful zero. Thank you. So we just need to maybe find that sweet spot where we can get things to work. It is touching though. Uh, but once it gets too fast, that's when it, um, that's when it just flies through everything. I don't know, maybe we can just like see if we can break this. Uh, I was setting up to sh maybe stream and fell asleep on the table. Oh no. That, that happens to me all the time. I'm like, I'm going to be productive and then, and then I, and then I just don't. Uh, so let's just move this out here and see if this will actually hit the funnel when it goes Mach a billion. Oh, oh my god, it did it. It hit it, it, and it didn't go through. Okay, so our physics are working. Guys, we are back. We're back in the thick of it. Our physics are working. So now we just need to, like, move things around and, you know, get things to not... Get the marble to not get, like, stuck on our on our shitty ramp that we made and all that. That's that's not hard, right? I think, I think maybe the friction was bugging things out before. I'm gonna put this back onto the, the default of 0.5. Oh man, okay, now we can make all sorts of nifty track things and such, and that'll be, that'll be a blasty blast. Good job. Everybody give, everybody give a hand to, uh, to Nuclear Dan, I believe, who uh, said that things need to be over 20 centimeters. Uh, and then with some finagling, we did, we did figure it out. All right, well that took much longer than it needed to. And we can get back to doing fun things with our hard surface models and making more of these, yay. Oh boy, all right, we will make more hard surface models after I get back from peeing because my bladder is about to explode because green tea does things to my body that I'm not proud of, all right. Let's make this longer, make it more chunga, actually, never mind. I'll leave that. We'll make more, we'll make more parts when I get back from Zibirum here. We'll get Android here. Just so we can get our quick. Ooh, he's a leggy boy. Perfect. That's totally readable. Great. All right. Potty break. Everybody else, get up. Do some stretching. Take a bathroom break. What is up with this bee? I don't... I, I Like, halfway through it. You know what? I'll be back. <laughs>
What about making a cheese wheel instead of a ball? <laughs> well, a cheese wheel can tip over and then he's not gonna have any any ability to keep rolling on our track. So I thought a, thought a marble made the most sense. How do I, how do I shikles? We don't have any lighting set up. One thing that I was playing around with in my render scene here for this guy to make it a little bit less contrasty, I think I showed this off yesterday, but in case I didn't. Uh, in the, yeah, actually right here. In the world settings, if you set your surface to background, you can import an HDRI and use that for your lighting setup. But if you use that in combination with your three point lighting setup or whatever kind of lighting uh, you have, you can get uh, some pretty good results. You just have to make your world lighting pretty, pretty weak. So this is like 10% here. Let that do its thing. And then uh, you get just like a little bit of fill light in there. So what that looks like completely though, uh, just to like quickly hide our lights. So if those lights are completely gone, this is obviously very subtle, very dark, not something that we would actually want to use. But we can just set that on 100%, which I think is just one, and let that infill. Uh, depending on the HDRI that you have, you can get a lot of different results. You can get some really natural lighting uh, for like outdoor scenes or even indoor scenes. Uh, there are also studio HDRIs, so you can like fake a studio lighting setup. I've found that just having the lights in your scene and like actually creating the physical, the physical studio lighting uh, works much better though than trying to fake it with an HDRI. But you can still get some really good results out of an HDRI and then using them in combination creates some pretty cool results as well. So just to show that again, let me put that back on zero and then I will unhide my studio lights here. Maybe, did I delete my studio <laughs> lights on accident? I thought I pressed H to uh, hide them. I might've accidentally deleted them. That is my bad. And because uh, Blender is chugging along here, turn off the render view there. I thought I just hid them. I must have gone full retard here and deleted them. Ugh, move please. All right, wow, apparently really hard to bring those back from the grave on Blender. Where'd you go? Undo. Come on, you can do it. Hey. Alright. And I'll turn that back on just so you can see it really quick. I, uh, I like the results uh, that you get from just like the three point lighting setup a lot more. I prefer having a lot of contrast in my renders. Uh, I know a lot of people prefer to, um, you know, just get like a lot of um, subtle shadows, which is something that you can get again with the combination of these two or with, um, you know, using just an HDRI. I actually prefer just like full on contrast, just three lights, sometimes four if you're trying to like get rid of some of those harsher shadows as well. But just to uh, show the difference here, let me just print screen that. Why can't I paste? There we go. I was being really weird. All right, so we'll turn that back to zero. Let that render for a few seconds get all 16 samples, which is like nothing. All right, print screen, paste. All right, just so you guys can see the difference here. I know this is super low resolution, but uh, just so you guys can see what's going on. So uh, definitely like a lot lower contrast. It also helps to fill in some of those shadowed areas. So if you're trying to show off your sculpt, I mean, it's really up to you, up to your preference. 
Uh, maybe you can even do multiple render passes and like try to blend between these two with a, some opacity settings. I like to just get, you know, as much kind of nice contrast as I can while still showing off the figure in a, uh, in a nice and appealing way where uh, you can still see what's going on with the mesh. This was just a quick clay render test to set up the lights and figure out how to play around with Blender. Uh, like I said, it doesn't take too long, so if anybody has any questions, let me know. But yes, we got some of our physics working right before we did a quick uh, bathroom break and some stretching break. I am, I didn't actually stretch. I'm the most unflexible person on earth. I can like, I can see my toes. I can't touch my toes. I'll just, I'll say that. So we got this, we got this working. The question is now, I think our ball is way too heavy. We need to figure out what kind of mass we want to set up to um, to get our marble working here. Ooh. I think I had this on five before and it was working with this. I think we just need to move some parts and pieces around and um, go from there. Ooh, okay. We will get this working. But now we can actually create some more, uh, oh, I forgot about this. <laughs> we can create some more hard surface pieces here in ZBrush. Uh, since some people asked, were asking about that yesterday. And uh, we can play around with the Z Modeler brush a little bit more. So I'll try to talk through the process for how I'm gonna make some more pieces. And if I go too fast or if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Uh, a bit late, but is there any way to check the dimensions of your object? Press the N key. That might be what I was looking for earlier. Uh, so are these the real world dimensions? That is what I was looking for, this um, information earlier. I could not find it though. Uh, so yeah, that, that's what I measured earlier. So just over 20, 20 centimeters though. That N hotkey is very nice to know though. I appreciate that, thank you. Uh, the mass shouldn't matter much if you are not hitting another thing with mass. Uh, but it will affect the um, rate at which the ball... Or I guess... I would think that it would affect how the ball rolls with the friction settings that I have. I, w I would think. Maybe, maybe not, since these don't actually move. My physics brain says, my small physics brain says that it, it should, it should matter at least a little bit. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can play around with those settings some more and try to figure out some more things. So we've created a funnel. That was fun. What else should we make? What else we got? We can make one of those little, um, like Peggle machines. I don't really know what they're called, but let's try, let's try doing that. I think that would be pretty cool. And that can be like our starting point, our shoot. What are those machines called where it's essentially like a big box. It has all these pegs in it. And then it creates like an even distribution of the balls or whatever falling down it. It's like not super complex or anything. They're pretty cool though. I don't know what they're called. Let's see. We'll do something like that. And then... Uh, I'm guessing it's probably pretty easy to set up like a transparent material in here. So we could do like a glass front to this object or something like that. Where's the material? I'm guessing there's just like in the base principle BSDF. It does not look like there is a transparent slider. Glass, perfect. All right, we'll do that. I'm just making sure it's easy before we get through here and do all this stuff. Okay, so let's make our little Peggle machine. I don't know what these things are called. Pachinko? Not a Pachinko. 
that is the Japanese gambling monstrosity of a noise machine. Uh, I've been in a pachinko parlor in Japan and it was, um, it, it's just ridiculously loud. You can't hear yourself think. It's, it's crazy. Uh, Francisco, what's going on, man? Uh, how's the new Gumroad course going? It is going great. Um, I said I would have some more info on that at the new year, at, uh, starting in this year, and I can talk a little bit about that. Um, for those that don't know, uh, I have a Gumroad, just link below, Gumroad slash Folygon. I don't even know where it is, there it is. I have some courses on here that are, um, you know, you download the content, you go through the content, and that's, that's the whole deal. You know, beginner, intermediate, more advanced style courses, and there's some other stuff on there as well. But I have been working on a new course that is going to have not only uh, pre-recorded content, but it's also gonna involve some real-time uh, feedback, critique, homework, and that kind of thing as well. So uh, for that course, I'm actually going through the entire process of uh, sculpting a character kind of similar to uh, Android um, 17 here. I believe he's 17, yes. Through Android 17, so kind of like a similar style, similar process. And uh, just like going through the entire thing uh, and starting with the most important thing, which I talk about all the time, which is fundamentals. Uh, so the entire course is going to be an eight week long course where each week there will be a new lesson, a new uh, set of homework, project based homework, and uh, a live session and a, um, a feedback session. So uh, each week there will be like four different pieces of content uh, unique to that week and um, you guys will be, for whoever signs up for the course, uh, will be going through the course with your own characters, a character of your choice, and um, each step of the week will be, you know, focusing like on the first week, a lot on the fundamentals, of course. That'll probably be like the most um, most technically heavy lesson, and then from there, you know, working more on blocking out your character, focus, and then like you know, getting into focusing in on stuff like the face, hands, feet, clothing, accessories, posing and then uh, finally doing some stuff with like lighting, rendering, poly paint, texturing, all that good stuff. So uh, I, I'm working on that right now. I will have uh, more information on the release date of when that'll finally go live. But like I said, uh, it's gonna be a thing where it's actually live, so I'm not gonna be able to have uh, a lot of um, open seats for it. So uh, it will have specific windows for where you can sign up for it and when you cannot. So if that is something that you guys are interested in, uh, be on the lookout for it, and I will have more info on when that is coming out, hopefully here soon. But yeah, I'm really excited about it, and that's uh, something that I've been asked ab about uh, a lot in terms of you know, live feedback, critique, having a uh, full process for going through you know, an entire character, and um, something that I really think is just lacking. Uh, this is the last thing I'll say about the, the, the course. Something that I think is really lacking uh, when you like, when you're looking online for courses, and this is something that I try to do in my stuff for my educational content already. Uh, but when you go on YouTube and you know you type in ZBrush how to sculpt hand, I mean it. it you might get a lot of the um, software information. You might get some of that technical information, but a lot of what gets skipped over is what goes into making you know appealing characters, characters that look good. And that's really what I hope to focus on, in particular, especially in that first week when we're talking about fundamentals. And then throughout the entire course, we'll try to bring that information forward with us so that we have a, a really good foundation that we can build up from there. But yeah, more info on that here soon, hopefully, on the uh, the release date. And yeah, I hope you guys, uh, guys look forward to it. Back to our pachinko machine. Not pachinko, but... I don't know what it's called. Some some kind of bastardized Rue, Rue Goldberg or whatever. You've heard it as well. You remember standing across the street from a pachinko parlor and hearing a wall of white noise. That's essentially it. It's it's awful. Uh, every time their door opens, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> 
I did, uh, I did not play. I have played a pachinko machine before, though. Um, uh, somebody I used to work with owned one at their house, and they had a party uh, that I got to play with it. They're so boring. I can't, I couldn't imagine sitting there for hours and hours doing that. Uh, really looking forward to it. Do you have a kind of possible date as to when it will be launched? Not yet. Not yet. No, uh, no info on the release date yet, but, but soon. Soon, soon, soon. I'm going to redo these because I had perspective on when I did that. And perspective screws things up. This is something that I really want to spend, you know, a lot of time on. Not this, my, uh, the, the, the new course. I want this to be like my swan song. <laughs> Not really, but I want this to be something that um, is exactly, you know, how I want it to be. I don't want to, I really don't want to cut any corner, corners on this. I want it to, um, not that I cut corners on anything else, but I want it to, uh, you know, I want it to be good. I want it to be exactly how I envision it in my, my big old brain, <laughs> my big old walnut. All right. I'm just cue meshing these out. Uh, it's probably the just quickest and easiest way to do this. You could have all, I could have also like extruded that geometry in. That's another way that you can do that. Uh, I actually don't need these edge loops, I guess. Where is delete edge loop? That's what I want. Perfect, beautiful. All right, and now a uh, like glass front for this. I'll just duplicate this and have this be like a separate mesh, separate material, all that good stuff. And yeah, we'll just get rid of those edge loops. Don't really need them. All right, so it will have a glass front so that we can, you know, peek on in and see what's going on with our marbles. And then I'll just put like some little pegs in here that we can play around with. Bounce some balls off of Let's see, let's just use our IMM primitive brush and grab a insert cylinder. This cylinder is pretty high resolution though. That's pretty dense, so let's not use that. Let's use my cylinder that I have created, which is my creased cylinder, which is just about as simple as a cylinder can get. And if we need to, we can add a couple subdivisions to this and still have it be a lot lower res than that last one. Let's just make some pegs real quick. This doesn't have to be anything fancy. Let's also increase the depth of this so that we make sure we have enough room for our marble to bounce around. Marbles, I should say. There will be multiple marbles eventually. We gotta get our physics working with one marble first, though. <laughs> Noble Yad, what's going on, man? Uh, I don't know much about Blender, but I'm wondering what menus these are called when I create a new option because they are permanently grayed out for me. I know you aren't Blender support, but I don't know what to search to fix this. You are asking the wrong person. My dude, I will take a look and see. Oh. I uh, started using Blender last week, so <laughs> I, I have no idea. Um, wondering what menus these are called when I create a new option because they are permanently grayed out for you. Um. So I know that when you insert an object in Blender, I think if you click away from it, uh, you cannot modify these settings anymore, these uh, ver vertex radius depth options. I think you have to do that right when you create it and then you can um, 
click away from it and then it's stuck like that. I'm not positive, but uh, I remember seeing something like that. And that's actually just kind of how it works in a lot of programs. Or if anybody in the chat knows as well. Uh, I don't know exactly what you're trying to accomplish either, so maybe if you want to be a little bit more specific, maybe somebody in the chat will be able to help you out. A cool little trick in uh, ZBrush here, if you guys are uh, wanting to clip off geometry like at a specific point, what you can do is click this inner circle on your uh, transpose line with move activated and it will do a quick trim function. So you can get that to be lined up exactly how you want it. And uh, I can do the same thing here. I just flip that around and trim it from the other side. Now that's all lined up perfectly. All right, so let's get some more pegs in here real quick. Let's just do like a really quick janky pattern. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just control clicking and dragging these. And I don't need these to be, you know, we could make these like really, you know, nicely designed, you know, in a specific order, but who wants to do that, right? If you did want to do that, <laughs> we can maybe look at that real quick. Uh, I didn't align this with the center point. It doesn't really matter, but I'll just control click and drag a couple of these. I'll make this a little bit more, you know, a little bit more specific, a little bit more Pacific. Perfect. It could not be more perfect, actually. There's uh, some translate settings that you can mess with down in your geometry menu as well. If you guys are trying to do something hyper specific, specific measurement wise, uh, there's not there's not a lot of options when it comes to getting really specific options uh, or really specific measurements in ZBrush. There are some little cheat codes that you can do. Um, and if you guys want to see, I can maybe show those off as well. Uh, and then I'll just do a mirror over to the other side. Beautiful. Perfect. All right. So we've got our little peggle machine, whatever this is called. Um... I am not going to subdivide these because really it doesn't it doesn't matter. The the collider for this will just become more difficult to calculate. So let's merge these together. Control W because we want that all to be one polygroup so Blender hopefully doesn't freak out. And then uh, yeah, let's export this bad boy. Uh, your issue is that you cannot alter any of these options. Um. So, like I said, when you first create, blah, blah, blah. When you first create your cube or cylinder or whatever you have, and you have these options, see how they're not grayed out for me? Yay, that's good. Uh, so I can like mess with some of these, but I'm pretty sure if I click away and then click back on it, that menu actually disappears in Blender 2.8. I think in the older version of Blender, it still stays there. But essentially what happens is once you click away from that object, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong in chat, but that essentially is saying, accept whatever these modifiers I have applied in here. I believe that is what that is saying. So if you want to create an object and still be able to modify those, just make sure that you don't click away from it. So add your cylinder, and now here are your options, and you should be able to modify these without um, without any problem. But if you click away, that should gray out for you. I think you're in an, an older version of Blender. So in Blender 2.8, at least, that menu disappears for me. I would guess that that is your issue. No problem, man. You are, you're not interrupting at all. That's why we're here. We're here to figure things out. You could also use a ray mesh as well if you want to get some uh, specific um, distances all repeating at the same same uh, measurement there. 
Your issue is that the options are always grayed out. Yeah, that is strange. I do not know. I do not know, my man. I wish I did, though. <laughs> Maybe, give me, like, one more week in Blender. I'll, uh, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out some more stuff. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to export our little pachinko parlor here. Let's see. And just call him Pachinko, even though that's not what he is. Alright, let's import our Chinko. <laughs> Sounds like a, uh, a racial slur. <laughs> Alright, import Pachinko. Or wait, isn't... Isn't like Chinko penis in Japanese or something? I think it might be. I can't remember. Or it's something that sounds very similar to that. Well, what we want to do actually, file import our glass, because we want to move both of these, move and scale these at the same time. Guys, I am a blender expert now. And by blender expert, I mean I can do a couple things. I can do a couple things in blender. Can I make this into a group? Does anybody know how to do that? That would be nice. No, stop. Because what I want to happen is I want this to be straight up and down instead of uh, you know, manually trying to align this. I know that you can hold the shift key and that like makes it slower, but, or is it control? Isn't there a way that you can, oh God. Isn't there a way you can snap? Ooh, maybe it is control. <gasps> Did that actually work? That doesn't look. Great. Wait, 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 wait. What did I just see? Maybe that is correct. Oh, I think it is. All right, cool. Because that is showing zero down there. Nifty. All right. Never mind. I would still like to make these into a group if I can. I think we might be scaling up our scene altogether as well. see if our little chinko thing works here. Does that fit? It does. Alright, cool. So let's make the front of this glass. I don't know if glass shows in this display. I guess we'll find out, right? That's right guys, I only stream Blender now. Uh, I think this is just this material here. Uh, I don't know if I can actually see through that in uh, in the viewport. I don't think so. We can just hide this for now. But I'm guessing if I doggy, you need to you need to shush out there. surface, background, environment texture, if we can get some lighting. I think the glass is working. I just don't think it works in the preview panel. Oh, 
That's fine, though. All right, let's see if this uh, will will fall down here once we give this guy some physics. You're learning all kinds of things today. <laughs> me too. Me too. I do. I know nothing about blending. Chin chin. That's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> Chinko. There was some joke that some dude I was with that that he made at a pachinko parlor. That's what made me think it was penis. I guess. Papa Frank. <laughs> yes, thank you, Filthy Frank, for letting us know. Uh, it does, yeah. That, that's it. That's what I was thinking of. Alright. This rigid body, this, this thing up. Rigid body, non-dynamic. Just make it a... Or this can stay convex hull, because it's just a square. It's just a cube. This needs to be a mesh, though, because it's got all those spiky dudes. Let's see if it will fall through. Amazing. It's doing it. Oh, and it's gone. And it's out. <laughs> Here, let's, um... Is there a way I can make this transparent in the viewport? Does anybody know? With it still interacting with the physics? I'm using the glass BSDF, because that sounded like the, the thing I should use. Um... Alt Z. What's Alt Z do? X ray not available in current mode. Ah, <gasps> amazing! Thank you, thank you, Dan. Dan is our hero, guys. Dan's been solving all of our problems. Wow, it just goes right through the middle one. This stupid. <laughs> let's see, let's maybe mess with the, the physics, the physique. I guess, I guess the mass, I would think that the mass and friction would like work with each other to do things. Hmm, I guess not. I, all objects, you know fall at the same speed, so. I guess I could change gravity. I could do that. I could mess with the gravity settings. But that's that's probably a good way to start screwing up our physics on everything else. So I probably shouldn't do that. We should probably just, you know, scale up some stuff and play, play with that. I don't know if uh, this will completely break if I scale it up, though. It's okay. We'll undo if that happens. It is moving a, a bit slower, uh, but it looked like it actually um, fell through our object. Looks like it's falling through. Yes, it is. All right, we'll just undo. That's okay. Things work at this scale. We're going to stay at this scale. Now, let's just do a quick scale of Rooney on this guy. Wow, it just falls right on through. Oh! I think we're still starting to get those physics issues that we had before. Which we shouldn't be, right? This was just working at this scale. Hmm. one point it just falls through oh we had it guys I thought it was working right there it reaches speeds beyond blenders comprehension well that's fun uh, maybe collision objects have to be enabled I don't know what that means. I don't think the collisions work with uh, 
with rigid body physics. It shouldn't have to be on. Um, this 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 is the collider right here. But I do know that um, I had to up the mass of things, even though they weren't moving, uh, just because the geometry would like slide through each other if it was too low. I have these all on 15, so I don't know. I, I'm guessing, whoops, not in reverse. I'm guessing this isn't gonna change a single thing. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can just cheat it and try to get it to bounce in such a way that it doesn't completely F everything up. So if I move this up really high, it should fall like right through. Once it reaches a certain speed, it says, nope, no collision for you. I actually, hold on. It's like after a certain point, a certain number of collisions, it gives up. Because it's actually, maybe it's not a speed issue. Oh God, <laughs> just like got stuck in that. So maybe it's not a speed issue. Maybe it's like, maybe it is a problem with our, our, what was it, steps or whatever? Where was that? Our steps per second. Uh, maybe local transformations need to be applied. Uh, you do a control plus A and then apply scale rotation, etc. Yeah, I, I, I saw something that said that online. Um, but it, I, I played with it and it didn't it didn't do anything. Is there not a way to apply all of this at once? Oh wow, neat. Sure, apply. That applied? Cool. Oh wait, let's see. Is it going to do it? Oh, I think it, I think it hit that though. It did hit that. Oh, you might be onto something here. Noble Yad. Noble Yad might have done it. Did you just solve all of our problems? <gasps> oh. It's doing things, guys. It's 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 doing things that it's supposed to do, and my throat just died. <laughs> I wonder why that is. Maybe it's like holding on to the old uh, transforms somewhere, somewhere in here. It's like in Maya, you have to delete your history, <laughs> or, uh, or in Google. Um, control A, apply scale. Yes, Noble Yad knows what's up. Good job, Noble Yad. Can I do this all at once? Can I like, Whoops. Can I just select everything? Okay. Guess not. I did not have to do this in my last, uh... What the deuce? Stop. What are you doing? Why is this one freaking out? Apply the location. <laughs> what? All right, you know what? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. This is fine. Everything's great. Oh, you know what? Now I, no, no, I don't know what's wrong. I lied. Everything's great, guys. Blender 2.8 is perfect. I have no qualms with this. No, it doesn't need it doesn't need to change at all. It's perfect the way it is. Now we just I think Blender knew that we wanted a larger funnel. I think Blender Blender knew what we what we needed. It said your your funnel's not big enough. We could also try doing this with soft body physics and like make our ball all squishy. 
I thought it would be easier with rigid body. <laughs> but uh, as we have proven, no, no it is not. All right, when I applied the... <laughs> I give up, I give up. It's It doesn't matter, nothing I do. Nothing I do matters anymore, guys. <laughs> So why is this uh, freaking out when I try to apply the transforms to this? Is there a way to like delete your, is there a way to delete my history? Let's see. Guys, we were supposed to be doing hard surface stuff. Oh, whoops. Hard surface things in Maya, or in Maya, in ZBrush. I don't even know what, program I use every single day of my life. Listen to me. Scoop. Oh, hold on. Do I have to apply those or is it is it going to break again? I need to apply the scale. I might as well just apply everything. Do I have to do this every time? That's fine. This is fine. Everything's fine. I see no problems here. That was perfect, guys. That couldn't have been any better. We do need to reposition some things, it looks like. Whoops. No, stop. Well, it doesn't even touch this ramp, so that's probably something we want to fix. Oh, it does. It touches it very briefly. All right, we will reuse this, yes. It looks like when I apply, um, it looks like when I apply that origin, or I'm sorry, when I apply uh, the scale rotation and uh, translation, that it moves the origin back over here, which is odd. Oh, and it doesn't want me to move it now. That seems fair. <laughs> uh, Alt R. Alt S and all that clears uh, rotation and scale. And we will have to try that. All right, so let's say Alt R. Do I need to click that? Oh, Alt S on this just makes it. Oh, there we go. Okay, so maybe that'll work now. I'm guessing Alt L is clear location, no? Uh, I would assume I would be able to clear the information in here. Maybe not. Object clear, come on, Alt G. What else did we have in there? Was that all of it? Uh, rotation, scale, and location. All right, guys, we will do this. We will figure this out. Get it all working properly. There has, th there has gotta be an easier way to do this. What was it? Alt S, scale as well. So can I move this? I'm so sad. <laughs> what have we done? I feel like Blender's just trolling me now. Back to ZBrush, guys. Back to ZBrush. We'll just we'll just play in ZBrush for the rest of the day. <laughs> We're, we're safe when we're with ZBrush. ZBrush knows us. We know ZBrush, all right? <laughs> At least the uh, physics are working now that we've applied those those transforms. Uh, if, what if you change the objects in edit mode instead of object mode? Uh, I don't know if that would make any difference. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Oh, I am in the middle of the timeline. 
That is a very good catch by you. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Was I uh, setting up keyframes on accident or something? Is this gonna freak out? Is this gonna m move? It is not going to move. Okay, so uh, we were moving things when we shouldn't have been moving things. That sounds that sounds about right. As things always are, it is an operator error. That's just kind of my life. One big operator error. All right, let's move this. I I I can't change the location of this transform here without making it freak out. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna play nice for a little bit and see if I can get it to work the way we want it to. Oh, that's perfect. All right, come on, object. Transform, or wait, hold on. What was it? Was it transform? No, set origin. Set origin to geometry, not geometry to origin is not what I was clicking. What is this program? So now it works. I'm guessing it was just the timeline. I, I really don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pretend that I know. I'm just hey, it's working now. This is what's important. All right. This is the beta. All right. It's fine. It's fine, guys. I'm sure. I'm sure it's just I don't. I'm doing things that I shouldn't be doing, and it's it's breaking. It's breaking. This is like Line Rider Extreme. Oh my God. No. It's terrible. All right. Let's move this. I'm gonna try to catch it on the uh, the tail end of the swoop. I don't like that I can't move it while it's in the middle of the timeline. I have to like, oh, all right. Let's see. We need to move this forward a little bit more. So we're pretty close there. Now it is like Line Rider. I just need the ability to set my little flag so that it saves my spot. So maybe just nudge your forward a little bit to catch that ball on the slope. I'm gonna try to like make it a little bit, a little bit nicer. Maybe our ramp just isn't gonna work. <laughs> um, let's see putting stuff back to its simulated position. That makes sense. Um, line Rider, yeah. I used to play Line Rider all the time in high school. I love Line Rider. Heck yeah, man. So many hours not wasted, used extremely well. When Line Rider first came out, it like didn't have the ability to, for you to save, um, save your like progress or anything. So you couldn't like, in the newer version of Line Rider, you could drop a flag in a certain area and try to like redraw a line multiple times. Uh, but at first, you know, you had to like rewatch the whole thing, kind of like what I'm doing now. I don't know if there's an easier way to like, try to get our shitty Rue Goldberg to go a little bit faster, but let's see. But yes, 3D software very rarely holds your hand. That is true. All right, Ramparoonie, you're you're out of here. We're done with you. Let's try something more fun. Let's grab our funnel. Isn't physics fun, guys? Not terrible at all. Alright, if we can get this to work, you know, I, I will be happy. Whoops. 
what I want to do is get to a point where we can just get like a bunch of marbles. Try doing a quick little marble race. Let's make this a little flatter so they spin longer. All right. Uh, so let's see. What was the order of did I need to clear? Oh. Did I need to clear the data first, or did I need to apply the data first? It doesn't look like what I wanted. Let's just see if this will actually collide properly. And it just hits it and stops. Perfect. It is perfect. Wait, where'd it go? Did we did we run out of frames? Guys, don't you just love my <laughs> very shitty blender simulation that I've made? All right, let's uh, let's make this like a thousand. Sure. Big long timeline. Maybe we can turn down the friction on our our giant cylindro. See, it's not spinning like we wanted. So maybe once we get some more marbles in there, maybe things will start going a little bit better. Oh no. Now the question is, do I need to apply that like every single time? I can't imagine that I actually do, but what do I know? Not Blender, that's for sure. At least it worked to get the physics to work. So I don't know. Marble race, go! Three, two, one, marbles. This will probably not work for some reason. Ah. All right, beautiful. Marbles for days. Wow, right, right in the middle. That's, hey, it did work though, it did work. Progress, guys, it's the little things it's the little things that count. Uh, let's see. Risky click. Uh, I have the friction on the default right now. But yes, are you saying I should turn down the friction? Because we can turn down the friction if we want. Uh, how did I come about this idea? So <laughs> somebody asked yesterday on stream, uh, I was showing off a new uh, render scene that I made and then I was showing off some other stuff that I had updated on this character. And then they were asking about um, hard surface modeling. And I should, there's like a few things that I heart, our heart could be considered hard surface on this guy, like just a couple. Uh, and then I did do some more poly modeling on this guy. But today I decided, <laughs> hash, r slash uh, shower thoughts, I was like, ooh, I'll just start uh, poly modeling some hard surface stuff. And uh, maybe we could make like a, uh, a like marble physics sim or something with those hard surface poly modeled things that we did. Uh, I wanted to mainly show off some stuff with the Z modeler here in ZBrush today. So if you guys do have any questions or you missed the Z modeler stuff, we can we can hop back in here if somebody has a question about you know how to make something specific or or do anything specific. So that's how we we finally got to where we are now, <laughs> and uh, we're we're doing things. We are doing things. It's getting there one step at a time. You know, our funnel just needs to be way larger, 
That's that's the ticket. That's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. We're gonna get this, guys. It's gonna be the best dang marble race you've ever seen. This is all I do now, guys. This is my new this is my new stream setup, my new YouTube channel, everything. Alright, how do I apply this? Uh, rotation scale location, sure. Cool. Cool. This could this could not be any better. Let's turn on shaded. Wow, look at those marbles go right in the middle. Beautiful. All right, maybe we can try like turning down the friction on this or something. See if that does anything. Friction. Friction. Oh, close. They did do some more swirlies. We like more swirlies. All right. Lower, Captain. Lower. Is this common? <laughs> no. No. No, not at all. All right. Oh, we ran out of frames, I think. Oh, no. I need to... How do I make this bigger? Sad. I don't know how to do that. Go away. All right. Point oh oh one. Let's see if these like fly off into outer space. Oh, they're hitting some of the geometry because it's got some bumps in it. It's not like perfectly smooth. Does anybody know how I uh, increase the size of my timeline down here? And nine 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 nine. Uh, so it's only showing up to like frame two fifty here. Is there like a way I can? Oh, I can just never mind. I can just scroll on out. Perfect. So now it should show all of that. Wow! Look at them go. My votes on the red one. Now, why is it stopping there? I did set... I did set this to go to, uh... 1,000. Is there a way to, like, make that recalculate and not stop at 250? Sim length? Where do we do that? Hmm. Uh, you don't have to apply location because that's just setting the origin to zero, zero, zero. But I did move it. If I move it, will that not uh, make it so that it needs to be recalculated again for the physics? That's the only reason I applied location for that one. Um, but yeah, let's see. How do we increase the length? I thought just increasing the the um, start and end here would do that. Let's see. I'm guessing the default is just 250. Rigid body cache. Hmm. 
Hmm. The length of its cache. Properties, scene. Properties, scene. I guess that's where I am, right? No, I'm not. Scene. Cache. Give me that cache. That's what we want. All right, it's beautiful guys, we did it. We did the physics. We did all the physics and it's going up to 1000. When will they stop? Oh, amazing, amazing guys, we did it. We did the marbles, all the marbles. All right, everybody cast your votes in chat. Let's see, does anybody know how to frame in on an object as well? That would be nice. Whoops. All right. Who's who's got money on red, green, blue? We can only do a few of them. We don't have to do a billion. All right, I got my money on yellow. Let's move them so we get a new get a new seed here. All right, place your bets, everybody. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Red, blue, green, or yellow. Bet with your bits. All one bit. I, I'll put, you know what, I'll put, I'll put one bit on yellow. <laughs> All right, come on yeller. Old yeller here, I'm feeling it. Oh yellow, you're so far behind, what are you doing? Oh no, there's no way yellow's gonna win. Oh, it's gonna be red. It's it's a hundred percent red. Oh, is it going down? Oh it's Oh no, blue! Blue swooped in. Blue swooped in, and yellow's gonna get absolutely last place. Ooh, nope, yellow beat green. That's good. Alright, alright. I did think red was gonna win though. Alright, let's see. Didn't anybody say red? I see no red. I see a green. The Google colors. I mean, I just chose primary plus RGB. Uh, background is banging. The Muzak, it's just a uh, pop sky. Pop sky is pretty dope. Like his, like his music a lot. Uh, just rotation and scale mucks up the physics. Awesome. So we will just apply that in the future. Add a subdivision to the swirly, yes. He's, he's a little bumpy. Um, control plus one, does that auto? Oh, that does. Let's see. A little tough to, tough to tell. Let's, let's go two. Let's make that a little bit more smooth. I don't know if I need to apply that or not. I don't know if that will still act accordingly. We'll apply that anyway. All right, we'll uh, we'll turn on shade smooth for swirly. All right, guys, place your bets. New bets. Blue. We got red. Here, we're gonna we're gonna shift things up here a little bit. I'm, I'm keeping my money on yellow. I feel like yellow really has a shot this time. All right. What's going on, Sandy? Welcome to the stream and thank you for the follow. 
All right, guys. Who's it gonna be? Red, green, yellow, or blue? Let's find out. Should we apply? I feel like we should apply some, some other quick materials to make this not so blindingly white. Let's just uh, turn down the, the value on our swirly. But assume that would have done everything. Object zero two. There we go. All right, who's it gonna be? Blue, green, yellow, or red? I got my money on yellow still. I'm just, I'm feeling yellow today. I, I'm feeling it. All right, let's see. Here we go. Three, two, marbles. Oh, yellow, why are you in last place immediately? Everything gets decided like right here. Oh no. And of course, blue immediately gets it and yellow's in very last, of course. What else, what else? Could have happened. Stupid game. All right. Well, this was a dumb idea. <laughs> um. Oh, oof. Yeah, that's right. Ah, it's a sad day indeed. I. This was just supposed to be something to show off some hard surface modeling and uh, and play with some quick physics. And by quick physics, I mean spend ninety percent of our time. Just trying to get the physics to work, which we did eventually, eventually do. All right, one last race, the last race of the day. We'll, we'll get a new seed here. Swap things up a little bit. Whoops. All right, guys, what's it going to be? Blue, red, yellow, green. I'm sticking with my, my champion. My last place champion of yellow. It's it's gonna it's gonna happen because I if I jump out now, that's when I'm gonna fail. That's when yellow rubs it in my face and wins. All right, guys. Yellow, green, red or blue for the last the last terrible marbles race that we have created here. This is so bad. <laughs> Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, by the way, I normally don't do this. I'm a, I'm a digital sculptor. I do uh, I make characters most days, uh, but we are we were doing some hard surface stuff, and we're like, hey, let's try some physics, and uh, and yeah. So everybody, get your votes in. Everybody, get your votes in now. I'm sticking with yellow. I'm feeling I'm feeling that yellow is gonna get this one. Yellow, green, red, or blue. Who will win? We start in 10 seconds. Seagull says green. Uh, got a trick. Click the swirly, press S, and then press Shift Z. Oh, and make it, um, uh, I don't think you need to press Shift Z. I think you just press Z. Whoa. This is Shift Z right now. The transform might be positionally off. Way down here. Here, set origin. We'll do that real quick. Uh, origin to geometry. If you're trying to, um... okay, never mind. Origin to geometry. If you're trying to just scale in that direction, in the Z direction, we'll shift Z it though. Bring a little funnel in. Beautiful. Uh, maybe we can just make it like way bigger. I don't know if this is a trick that I want. Let's see. Let's try that. I think if you just press Z. Oh, oh, oh Nelly. All right. I think this is what we want. I want it to be. Oh God. I'm trying to rotate at the same time. I want it to be like a little bit. Uh, a little bit more shallow. So let's try that again. Scale in only the Z. So maybe we can get him to swirl a little bit longer. We'll see how that goes. All right, guys. All bets are final. Yellow, green, red, blue. My money's on yellow. Let's see it. Watch, they're all just gonna like fly off. 
in the race, the race, oh my god, yellow, yellow, yes, yellow, yellow's in first, <laughs> and there, okay, wow, this one sucked, this, okay, we're redoing it, yellow actually won, though, so, you know what, I'm, I am happy, I'm okay with this, and, uh, green came in last place, all right, well, that wasn't, that was not what we wanted, I'll undo the, uh, the, the crappy scale that I did there, Yellow was in first, though. I knew it, guys. I knew that was the one. All right. This is the last race. <laughs> I know I said that about the last one, but this. This is actually the last race. So tiny over here. All right. A little bit of a more randomization there. There's no way it'll be the same this time, right? <laughs> red. Nuclear Dan's got his money on red. Oh, I need to I need to apply on this as well. Maybe that messed it up. All right, let's see what we can do. Here we go. Come on, Yeller, I need ya. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. No blue. Yellow's got the inner the inner circle. Blue's coming in tight though. Oh man, it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. Oh, and it blue. It's blue, and red's just in dead last. Sorry, sorry, Nuclear Dan. <laughs> Sorry, red just red just sucks. He got the first one, but I think he just got lucky. All right, <laughs> I think that's enough of uh, of shitty marbles. Uh, again, I did this little quick uh, three point lighting setup yesterday, or not yesterday, uh, last week, and I was showing it off yesterday. This is uploaded on my YouTube channel if you guys want to figure out how to make something like this in Blender or literally in anything because uh, the information that I go over is uh, pretty universal in terms of just uh, studio lighting. It's the same setup that you'd have for like physical setup in, a, in your own studio. Uh, other than that, yeah, uh, I'm going to try rendering this guy in Blender, uh, probably play around with it a little bit off stream so I can try to figure out some things. Uh, before we try to have another mishap like with our physics. If you guys are interested in hard surface modeling, we did some of this in the earlier parts of the stream for like really simple stuff if you're just getting in and uh, really new to using the Z Modeler brush. Uh, other than that, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel where you guys can check out some more stuff with uh, hard surface modeling, organic modeling, etc, etc. Other than that, thanks everybody for the help <laughs> with the physics and everything as we played around in Blender. Like I said, I'm not a Blender boy. I picked it up last week for the first time, mainly just to set up this uh, this nifty quick render scene. And uh, now we used it to try to play around with our hard surface models that we quickly made and tried to do some quick physics, which ended up being um, very, very slow physics. <laughs> All right, but I think that's uh, gonna be it for today. Thanks everybody for coming and hanging out and I hope to see you guys in the next stream, which will be tomorrow at noon EST. And then uh, we're gonna be doing our uh, do doohickey on Saturday, our bully Saturday, our live critiques. If you guys wanna get in on the critiques this uh, Saturday, the instructions are in chat for ya. Uh, just shoot me an email, send me your Z tool, and we can uh, check it out. Other than that, gumroad.com slash polygon. There's a link down below where I have some courses for digital sculpting and uh, some brushes, materials, uh, all sorts of nifty little things that I uh, have on there that I use professionally. And yeah, I think we will end our stream with the final, the final, final, final marbles race because I'm just gonna keep doing more marbles races because I like marble races now. This is this is all I do now, guys. I just make marble, marble race videos. It's very, hello, welcome to my new Twitch channel, Shitty Marbles. <laughs> all right, we're, we're getting a little offset here. This will this will mess with your head. All right, no, yellow's got the, uh, you know what, we'll keep it, we'll keep that. All right, guys, final marble race of the day. Here we go. You're not allowed to change your color now. This is just it. This is the final one. And then I am out of here for the rest of the day. And I hope to see you guys, like I said, either tomorrow, same time, same place, or um, Tuesday, at next Tuesday, on the Pixelogic channel, which is at 6 p.m. EST. 
Other than that, I'm looking for, I'm stalling as I find a quick artist that's maybe doing some cool 3D stuff that we can shoot a raid to. Oh, okay, just, sure, that's not, that's not cool. All right, here we go. Last race. I'm sticking, I'm sticking with yellow. Yellow has not done me wrong, except for every time, except for once. <laughs> so here we go. Last one. All right, okay, well, this is why, this is why I'm the Marble Master, guys. I trusted in yellow. I didn't doubt. And yellow brought me prosperity. But who's in last? It's red again. That was pretty much the same results as the last one. <laughs> All right, that's it for today. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.